Yes. What do you wish would happen? Like how, Mm -hmm. I'm curious, like, how do you wish that acknowledgement or recognition would come to life in a, in a work environment? I wished instead of I wish instead of employees instantly assuming we're the enemy, they assume that we're actually like their ally. Mm-hmm. And I know there are so many. The problem is there are so many bad HR teams out there mm-hmm. that sometimes can't fight a CEO. I have a wonderful CEO now who like listens to me, respects mm-hmm. me, and treats me with kindness. That has not always been the case. Yeah. So I'm it's... able to do a lot. Mm-hmm. I just, but I wish sometimes employees even gave us like the benefit of the doubt that s- hopefully your HR team is going to be a good one. But too what? many people, I've been burned by bad HR teams. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how to say it other than like, I will never, I don't think you can do this job like HR in general if you're also like not uh, equipped to handle conflict. And if you don't like conflict, like you shouldn't be in this job because we have to fight for what is right and fair and equitable all the time. Yeah. And I think this is like also, this is connected to stuckness as well, because I feel like today there's this feeling of not wanting to deal with hard things just across the board, right? If people have a different viewpoint than you, We'd rather like exist in our echo chamber on social media than have a conversation with that person yeah. or try to understand and empathize and and find a way forward where we both can coexist, right? We're in this space and time where we just we want to avoid challenge. And I always say to people, because ugh, oftentimes when people come to me, they're like, I'm stuck. It's so challenging. But it's like, The thing is, no matter which path you go down, even if you pivot, it will be challenging. Suffering is an inevitable fact of life. And that's a hard truth to hear. And it's one I feel like I've accepted in the past year or two. But it's like, no matter what you do, there's going to be challenges. You will be frustrated. And it's really just about figuring out which challenges are worth, you know, figuring out and and moving through and which challenges are right for you, which challenges fuel you and drive you and propel you to move forward. So oftentimes that comes up a lot when, when people want to pivot their careers. It's like a question of challenge and I'm like, both will be challenging. So it's like, which one is, okay. is worth fighting for? Are there any warning signs you see that like indicate that it's time to either make that career pivot or completely leave a job? So I think that if you've done the work, right, to really articulate what you want and and why you want it and you communicate that and articulate that to, let's say, your boss or your client and there's a a conversation had there's action items that are set. If there is no mutual accountability and follow through, let's say in the next month or so, Mm. that's usually an indicator that you should go. And I encourage all of my clients when they're in a position like that, you need to set a decision-making deadline. So if you have a conversation like I said, with a boss or with a client and you communicate what you need to be successful. And let's say that's a very productive conversation, but a month from Mm -hmm. that time, if you're the only one doing the work and following up to get those action items done, then that's your answer, right? That's That should give you the information you need to be like, okay, well, I can't control that person. You can't control that. You can't control a system or an organization. You just can't. And so at some point, it's like you can only control yourself and you have to just, when someone shows you who they are, you believe them. I always tell people and they're like, my boss said I'm going to get a promotion. I'm like, when? And people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, when did they say you're going to get that promotion? And they're like, well, they just set up. And I was like, no, no, you need to go back. You need to get some action items. You need to get a deadline. I need to get mutual agreement that that promotion yep. is either a thing that's going to happen mm-hmm. and a timeline. Mm-hmm. And I know people who have waited years. And I'm years. like, what are you doing? 
Like they are showing you, I just, this, this might get me in trouble or in the hot seat with some HR people, but like their HR is showing you who they are when they promise you one thing and then do another. 100%. If the actions do not align with the words, I'm out. Yeah. (laughs) That's my indicator. And again, it's like everything needs to be in writing. I also see that happen a lot with people in different positions, whether they're an executive or they're an entrepreneur and they're pitching, you know an external party, you have to get everything in writing. Recaps are so important. Timelines are so important so that it's there's always that paper trail and source of truth that you can go back to. Because otherwise, everybody interprets conversations and experiences in a different way, right? Based off of like the bias that they come into the conversation with or what was going on in their day. Maybe they weren't even totally paying attention. And so then it becomes a a game of he said, she said, and you can't really track like, well, okay, well, you did say this was going to happen. And so then it puts the power, let's say, in the employer's uh, hands instead of the employee. Whereas if you're an employee and you make sure you get that in writing, you get them committed to a timeline, you have that and can use that. And again, these are things that help build your self-confidence. 